Brought to you by five guys who haven't reached third base. This is the Radio Scouts podcast with John, Mike, Andrew, Alan, and Nick. Welcome to another episode of Radio Scouts podcast. I am Mike. I'm joined by Nick and Alan. Nick is uh, returning for the first time in a few weeks, anyway. So let's uh, let's welcome him back. The spawn of Satan has given him a night off, apparently. Yep, <laughs> that's right. Uh, so, guys, what? Uh, anything new and exciting going on besides baseball stuff? It's like in our personal lives. <laughs> I've got a complaint. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right, so Nick, uh, Mike knows this because um, we're both big fans of uh, Collective Arts Brewery from Hamilton. Oh yeah. Um, so you go to so I, I've gone to the brew um, the brewery twice to the tap house, and so you can buy beer to go there, and you can also just you can get like a fourteen ounce glass or whatever. So if you buy a fourteen ounce glass there, it's like ten twenty five. If you buy a can, they range from three fifty to four twenty five, but you're not allowed to drink them there. How okay. fucking dumb is that? Pretty dumb. It doesn't make any sense. So I'm like, can I just buy a can and drink it here? No, you're not allowed to. You have to pay the ten whatever. So you pay double the price to drink that, the same beer. That's so stupid. That's incredibly dumb. Yeah. Yeah. Across. And we were wondering why, like. We were wondering why the friggin' bill the first time we went was so expensive. Yeah. I work across from a, a brewery slash restaurant and it's the opposite. So you can like you can get a beer on tap if you want, but if you want it you can get cans and just sit down and open them up like they don't care. And it's good. That sounds pretty good for sure. What uh are you guys drinking tonight, if if anything? I've got some jam, the mash, and that's collective arts. Yep. Yeah. I've got a, go a lug tread. The hell is that? Yeah, what is that? It's a a Bose beer. A Bose. Bose like speakers. No, it's like B E A U S. You've never seen it. I can't say I have. Is it really? Mike, you you wouldn't see it. I think it's Ontario. It's redneck beer. It's a just a craft beer. It's really good. Okay, nice. They have other varieties. I am drinking uh, Collective Arts Blueberry Sour with Cacao Nibs. And I gotta say, this beer is, like, exquisite. Like, holy fuck, maybe the best sour I've ever had. What is... I'm glad you like it. You guys are super into these sour beers, eh? Oh, they are so good. <laughs> have you ever had them? No. You need to get really? Really? You gotta try, yeah. man. Like, we, what's the they're what's the sell on it? We probably talked them up way too much. They're sour. Them, they're they're really delicious. Like I've had like you know, raspberry wheat beer and stuff like that. It's, it's nothing not like that. No, nothing no. Like that. It's like it depends on the type of like different companies make different sours, and some sours are very very sour, and some are just kind of like they make your mouth tingle. Huh. I'd probably it's, like them. Oh. Yeah, so uh, the the one that Mike's drinking actually sent to him illegally via Canada Post. Thanks, Canada Post. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, you're not allowed to send beer. I I don't know why. Lots of weird uh, laws are so. Oh, we were in the LCBO last week, and we got just like we we wanted to just get like a bottle of wine and a six pack. So we walk up to the checkout, and my wife was carrying the six pack, and she puts it on the thing, and I go to pay and I get ID'd, which is fine. Um, and then she asked for my wife's ID and she doesn't have her wallet on her. Oh and God. They wouldn't sell us. Yep. That's happened to me pack because she carried it up. I'm surprised they didn't, they didn't, they didn't deny you both things. They said that they said I could buy the, me. yeah, they said I could buy the wine if I wanted. Cause I carried it up when I had that's, my ID. That's the most arbitrary like barrier I've ever heard in my life. I know. Like, what is that? It's like it's like 
we're having like the in-laws over and I want to buy six light beer. <laughs> they wouldn't sell them to me. Careful now. <laughs> six beers. Just yeah. wild. That's, that's pretty Yeah, cool. that my my wife always leaves her wallet in the car. And it's not often that we get ID'd, but sometimes like these, especially in grocery stores, I find is that they have this newfound responsibility here. Mm. Like it's different in uh, Alberta, but like the whole thing of grocery stores selling beer is only a recent phenomenon here. So they got all, you know, uppity about it. And they'll just, they'll just friggin' ID anyone. Yeah. You have like a, you know, long ass gray beard, they'll ID you. One time when I was like 12 years old, I got ID for buying a lighter. <laughs> and, what? Yeah. Yeah, those convenience store owners, they love making up rules. Yeah, and they wouldn't sell it to me. Even <laughs> That's what I found. I wasn't I wasn't even like smoking or smoking weed or anything. I was fucking 12. <laughs> so then you probably oh, stole a bunch of five cent candies. Right? Or... Yeah, I like to get back at them for sure. Just stuffed your pockets. Whoa, admitted on tape. All right. <laughs> so, guys, uh, Raphael Dolis, or maybe it's Dolis. He's obscure enough that we don't really know for sure. But uh, just signed with the Jays, one-year deal, $1 million, plus bonuses with a club option for 2021 at $1.5 million. He was, uh, he was pitching in Japan, and his numbers were pretty good. Um, you know, like, this is not a bad signing, especially for the price. What, do you guys have any uh, thoughts about this? And you know, does he immediately slide into that bullpen for next year? Well, I think he's got to compete for a spot. But it'd I mean, be surprising like, if he didn't make it. Like they gave him major league money because they think he's going to be a major league arm. Yeah, that's true. Um, I watched him on YouTube. Obviously, after they signed him, and looked like he was sitting like ninety five. He's got some you know, cool hair and stuff on the mound. A lot of mound presence, as the scouts will say. See, I disagree. I don't think his hair is cool. I hate it when those Dominican guys, they just, they do the the blonde tips on their dreads. Uh, I don't like it. I think it's a bad look. It definitely, it definitely I think it subtracts from his closer uh, credibility. Like if Giles were to get traded, I don't think he can move into the closer role with hair like that. Subtracts, wow. Yeah. He's going to have he to like, he, he'd probably have to, lifted. yeah, I was going to say he'd have to do that or he'd have to wear his hat like Luis Castillo and like barely on his head. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> Although that's better than Fernando Rodney, yeah? No, no, he'd have to wear his hat like Fernando Rodney or he's doomed. Oh, okay. That's how, how do you think Fernando Rodney has been a closer for so long despite being bad? I thought it was the arrow, the power of the arrow. Well, that helps, but you know, that's only when he's finished you know the saves that he's actually able to convert for that though it's all about the hat tilt mm, okay and so, as he's gotten older that the hat has moved further and further to the side it adds a good amount of swagger right yeah even if you don't deserve it <laughs> so i think Dolis really needs to rethink his hairstyle choices um but other than that i i i, I don't know why uh, who am I? I don't know who I'm thinking of, but the the way he like separates takes, his hands. Yeah, he separates, the ball out, puts takes it back the ball in. out. I don't really I like that. I can't remember who else did that as a timing mechanism, but uh, but you remember someone doing it. Uh, there's a few people that do it. Yeah, uh, did Brandon Morrow do it for a bit? Um, uh, maybe. I think this is a really interesting signing because, well, I don't know, but really, it's interesting because there's still like decent guys on the board with major league data and the blue jays chose to go to japan and give this guy a guaranteed deal rather than like jeremy jeffers just signed for less than a million bucks yeah and he was awesome two years ago and okay last year like he had a fifth under four to be fair craig stammon signed for quite a bit yeah, a few more relievers have yeah. signed for quite a bit but there's still I guys think... on the board is my point like colin McHugh's on the board robbie erlin mm-hmm. yeah but um, you don't know what those guys are asking for it's Robbie true. Erlin would be a nice target. I wouldn't mind him. Both those guys really would be. Yeah. Is David Phelps still on the board? Yep. I wouldn't mind David Phelps again. 
round two. And there, there's a few other names. And again, yeah, you don't know what they're asking for. Like Pedro Strope's probably asking for, you know, a few million bucks or something. And so they don't want to go there, but they must. But he can really the think... closer role. He's got the hat tilt. Yeah. Yeah. Like, this is a decent test of their Blue Jays scouting and analytics department, right? Yeah. Right, it's yeah. telling that they, they obviously think highly, more highly of him than, uh, you know, some, like a guy like Jeremy Jeffers anyway. So that's that's definitely intriguing. But just to give a little background on uh, on Delise, he is 32 years old. Uh, he's pitched the last four seasons in the uh, in the NPB in Japan. Uh, 206 innings. That's uh, 10 Ks per nine, 2.7 walks per nine. It was primarily in relief, actually entirely in relief. Ninety six saves. Um, so I mean, you know, he was RA nine was three point one zero. By the way, two point. I haven't really paid attention to this, but do you guys? How do um how do Japanese strikeout numbers translate to MLB? Because I imagine they probably translate pretty well. Because from what I imagine, or from what I recall of um, Japanese players, is that they don't tend to they they tend to make a lot of contact. Like they're kind of like um, the opposite hard to strike out, right? Like they don't they don't go for power. They they are like the Japanese league is full of you know little slap hitters, basically. Uh, you, you look at the major is league that racist calculator. Probably no. Yes, maybe. Probably. Oh, oh well. Uh, like you look at a guy like here's an example. The Yoshi Hirano, who, by the way, is still a free agent. He pitched for Arizona the last two years. His strikeouts per nine was like 9.1. His career strikeouts per nine in the Japanese league were lower than that. Two years of pure relief before he came over, his strikeouts per nine were lower. So like he was found a way to maintain, if not increase, his K rate in the bigs. He walked a few more guys. I was just gonna say- well, I think that's probably to be expected. I think Japanese league in general is probably more free swinging than the majors. And- like it's a different game, right? And don't they have a bigger strike zone over there? Is that still a thing? Because I think that was a thing when like Dice K came over. They were talking about that that uh, the strike zone was bigger in Japan, so his walk rate went up like significantly. I think they call yeah they call more strikes. Like if you watch the videos, sometimes you see curveballs that are you know, way off the plate. And the Japanese Joe West is doing cartwheels, punching guys out. <laughs> no, that's definitely racist. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, this is a pretty interesting signing, though, at the very least. And the, like for the price point, absolutely nothing to lose. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, co- it's cool to get guys like Yamaguchi and Dolis with some intrigue rather than just, you know, scuzzy old 32 year old veteran. They're trying to flip at the deadline. I really hope that uh, Yamaguchi's dad makes it out to a game. <laughs> he's, he's, a, he's a legit sumo wrestler. <laughs> <laughs> also, I don't know if people know, but Shun Yamaguchi has an arrest on file. Uh, he was arrested for trying to fight a bunch of, I think it was either police or security yeah. guards at a club. <laughs> <laughs> and and he looks like his haircut is like all time. Like that's gotta be a top that's gotta be a top ten haircut in MLB. Okay, so yeah, great. Power rankings haircuts. Um Rafael Dolis or Shun Yamaguchi? Yamaguchi. Oh, not Yamaguchi even close. By far, yeah, not even question how dare you even broach that subject really oh it's so it's so tight he looks like a vegetable or something it's amazing (laughs) oh like the topic what do they call the long broccoli like broccolincini or something that's right uh i don't know (laughs) something (laughs) that's what he looked like uh okay so also uh nick castellano just signed with the reds but what are the reds doing like i don't i don't get it like, why do they keep signing these guys? Giving a bunch of two and a half win guys sixty million dollar deals. Yeah, so it was four years, sixty four million, with a twenty million dollar club option for a fifth year, or mutual option, sorry, for a fifth year, with a two million dollar buyout. So I mean, that that's, I mean, that's probably what 
people would have expected Castellanos to get, but that's that's a lot of money still for a guy that is probably perpetually overrated. And also the fact that the Reds don't need him. Like, where is he going to play? Who's? I I don't understand. They have so many guys that probably deserve to be regulars, and yeah, well, now they, they're looking at trading Nick Senzel. Like, why? Well, None of it the, makes sense. The only way it's going to make sense is if they. Well, it's not the only way, but the only obvious way based on recent rumors is if they can move Senzel and somehow get like Lindor back. So then they're upgrading on Freddie Galvis by five wins. Like that that would make sense. All of a sudden they'd be good. But couldn't couldn't Senzel yeah, slot I suppose. in a short? Like isn't he decent enough a shortstop to to pull that off? I mean I have no idea. I think I think he's probably like a Left well, fielder or the third Reds, baseman. Well, the I Reds don't think have, he's a shortstop or center fielder. The Reds put uh, Jesse Winker in center field, so I don't know if they're too concerned about that. To be honest, yeah, they're definitely you trading. Know, I love, two, I like love Jesse Winker. But... Players. Yeah, they they pretty much have to because I mean, uh, as you pointed out to me uh, recently, Nick, they have a glut of uh, of outfielders on that roster. Yeah, like, I mean, there's. There's Winker, there's Senzel, there's uh, Aristestes Aquino, there is uh, Josh Van Nieto. <laughs> Testes. <laughs> Testes, Testes Queen. Testes. Testes Queen. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, Josh Van Meter. I mean, I'm forgetting the Scott. Akiyama. Akiyama, who they just signed recently. Phil Irvin. Yeah, Phil Irvin. So many dudes, and they're all major leaguers to some extent. Especially Jesse Winker. <laughs> yes. So I mean, it kind of opens up the Reds to yeah, like as we as we just said, like multiple trade scenarios, and Nick Senzel is a, reportedly being offered. Um, whether or not that's just reporter speculation, or if there's actually some truth to it, we don't know yet. But it, you know, Jesse Winker, I mean, he he seemed prime to be uh, a prime target to be moved potentially, and I mean, we God think that that would work out pretty well for the Jays if they were to move, say, a guy like Ken Giles plus maybe. I don't know something. I don't think Winker would cost Giles plus. No, just it just I don't, I don't straight up, they, and I don't even think I would like that that much. Really? Yeah, I don't even think they'd have to give up Giles for I, Winker. I was just thinking like a Giles. like a I don't know fifteen like a prospect in the fifteen to twenty range kind of thing. Like an auto. Yeah. Well, would you trade a guy like Eric Pardino for Jesse Winker? Straight up. Yeah. Yeah, I would. I would. I don't too. think the, I just don't think the Reds are moving any of these guys for prospects like, yeah you're, you're right well they're kind of putting pushing all their chips in right now yeah i don't know how like i would love for the jays to get senzel he fits the roster so well because he can slide into third when vlad gets hurt in spring training or bad or too bad i just don't see how it fits like yeah they probably want giles but that doesn't get you all the way there they'd have to be in love with reese mcguire as the second piece and then it's like well, you've pretty... talked about McGuire being better than Jansen. So, would you do Giles and Jansen? I don't know if I would. That's a little rich. Like, are Jansen and Senzel pretty much a wash at this point? No, I kind of feel like they are. I don't think I. I can. I. I kind of agree with you, but I don't. What I'm saying is, I don't think that's industry consensus. Right. Yeah. Maybe not. But with J- like the data on Jansen's defense and stuff now, it's like he's objectively, I think, worth about as much as Senzel on his own. Um, I don't think Maguire's going to be better than Jansen. I just think there's. It seems like there's like a non-zero probability he might be the better of the two over time. I would there, trade Reese Maguire and Ken Giles for Nick Senzel, though. Obviously, That'd be fair. right. Well, yeah, and if you're saying obviously I would do that and that's fantastic, then obviously the Reds wouldn't do it. Yeah. That's the thing is I can't think of the third piece. The, like, Reese McGuire's an upgrade on Tucker Barnhart, and he Reese McGuire can platoon with Tyler Stevenson next year when he's ready because, like, lefty-righty. Still, though, it's like they, they'd have what to about love a guy like Reese McGuire. EJ Zoinks. Yeah. <sighs> I can't see him. I mean, you never know, but I can't see him holding much trade value to other. He had a pretty good debut. What about Anthony K? See, now that's a possibility. And then, and then you start to get to the point where it's like, well, would I? 
I, like I, I really like K. Yeah, I, I like right. K. But I mean, like, are you really gonna let him be a roadblock to getting Nick Senzel? I, I wouldn't, but I like I know what you're saying. But um, yeah, I, I, like if that's what it, if the if the Reds came to you and said that's what's gonna take to get it done, I, would you balk at that or would you just be like, all right, well we're just gonna do it? K. McGuire and Giles. Yeah, for just Senzel. I, mm-hmm. I think I would do that. Well, get them to throw in Winker. Play hardball. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm sure that I, I would ask, I would really milk the Reds for the, like some throwing pieces and stuff, but it it probably makes sense for Toronto. They kind of need starting pitching depth. I don't know what the Reds are doing with their rotation, really. This is the depth, yeah. I mean. I don't know if guys like Jose De, like De Leon and uh, Lucas Sims, if they're treating them as starting pitchers or not. Yeah, I mean, K would ostensibly solve that issue. One of the issues, I guess. I'd do it for sure. I'd do that. Like, potential to get a core bat. He was like, is still a top prospect, really? Like, I would do that. And he played a decent enough center field that he could at least be a viable option there for the Jays, I think, too. Yeah, like I said, he fits the roster so well, even not even in the short term, like over the next few projected years, because right now he can play center field. But then he's probably going to slide down to third, yeah, at some point, and that would be his his uh, long term home. Yeah, that oh, that would be great. Winker. All right, so Senzel. who's uh? Do you want to email Ross or should I? Uh, let's email. Uh... <laughs> or go over his head to Mark. Let's just go right to Mark. Make this. Let's yeah. go straight to Mark on this one. Wait, we don't pay attention to chain of command here. No. no. I'm sick of Ross's emails. They're always so long. They never say anything. <laughs> That's right. So many words for for nothing. So that was the only news in the uh, baseball world, though, recently. Starley Marte got traded to Arizona. He has two years left on his contract. A flyover, Paguero, and Brennan Malone that went to Pittsburgh in return. This is, uh, I mean, in my opinion, this is... It's probably about right, but I think Pittsburgh did pretty well in this trade. I mean, that's probably two roughly 50 future value prospects right now with the potential for so much more. Do you have any- what would the, what would the Jays equivalent be like Miguel Geraldo and Klofenstein or something like that? Probably even better than cloth. Maybe, maybe more like a Pardino, even though like development wise, they're obviously in different spots like Pardino and Malone. But yeah, Klofenstein maybe is close, closer in that sense. Cause Malone is a uh, high school pitcher, but he's apparently very, um, developed right now and they do think that he could be potential like number two or at least that's what pros- um, uh, prospect evaluators are saying so I don't know I, this is a pretty good trade for two years of a guy though I think especially compared to some of the trades we've seen recently Marte's, Marte's good but he's not he's not like a superstar yeah you know, uh, for a few years there, he was borderline. But, but what is Arizona doing, you guys? I mean, does this even make sense for them? I, I kind of don't. I think they're good. I think they're good now. Do you? They've done that. They've done that recent Diamondbacks thing again, where you think they suck, but they won't. No. Well, I just think that there's a whole bunch. Like you know, the Dodgers are obviously the cream of the West, but there's a whole bunch of teams in the wild card hunt that. I, like Arizona could be looking at overtaking like there's really no clear uh like fourth fifth best teams in the NL I mean there'll be there'll be some teams in the uh NL East for sure that will be in that race the wild card race like Philly and the Mets and the- yeah but Philly so Philly so Philly and the Mets they're so kind of mediocre right I think that's what I think that's what teams like the reds and and um and the diamondbacks are seeing yeah although the diamondbacks at least are doing stuff that makes sense i think i think josh rojas is pretty interesting but does he have a spot to play i guess that's that's the question not right now yeah yeah they've they've assembled quite a bit of depth in arizona i guess that's that's the one thing like their floor has been raised considerably through through trades and through um just development so I guess, you know, a guy like Sarli Marte probably... I just think in, in the NL, it's... I, I just think, like, if you're around a 500 team, like, you're not really that far away from a wild card spot. Yeah. I mean, the, and, the, the friggin' Rockies made it a couple of years ago. 
And the D backs have or had just, they had a ton of really good minor league depth to deal from. Like they had guys like uh Geraldo Perdomo that made uh Piguero tradable. They have so many arms in the lower minors too. That's true. Like some of their A ball teams are in like fucking like stacked like they have a whole future major league rotation and a ball it's funny they went from being i think one of the worst farms in baseball like two years ago to now being probably one of the deepest farms in all of baseball and like not just deep like it's pretty good at the top end too and they've shown that they kind of know what they're doing in recent trades too like getting zach gallon uh, for like uh, the uh, or whatever the uh, Taiwan Walker trade? No. Oh. Okay. Oh well, apparently that was robbery from the get go for the. For what the, did they? Uh, what did they deal for? Him? So they traded Mitch Hanniger. Uh, they got Marte. in that trade. Was he? Yeah. So but Ma- then they won the trade. It wasn't the Taiwan. It wasn't it was Taiwan Marte. Walker, but okay. The red herring. Yeah. Shit. I, I'm like, <laughs> yes. I'm sure that was the same trade. Oh, they got someone else. They got Hanniger and well, I, uh, I, gave up some, I think it was like a two for two trade. Like I think they got or they gave up somebody else too. But well, Taiwan Walker at the time was like the oh Google Gene trade and... Mean Gene. Oh, that's true. Who was also he, good he, after the he trade. was yeah he worked out pretty good. I think that turned out to be actually a pretty fair trade. Uh, I don't know. I can't calculate it. Segura obviously didn't have like full range of control. Uh, Marte had more control. I think Hanniger had almost full five years left at the time, and he's good. Actually, I've read Gene Segura comps for uh, Leo Verpiguero, so maybe they just don't like that type of player. <laughs> like Segura, yeah. Uh... Good ones. Yeah, good ones. <laughs> good players they don't like. It is kind of funny, though, that Cattell Marte just hit, like, his 99th percentile outcome. Like, he was never even good in the minor leagues, really. And now he's just, like... Oh, well, it's, it's the same with Suarez, right? Oh, yeah, that's, that, yeah, that's a good point. He had surgery today. Yeah, that sucks. Ejueño? Yeah, he yeah. Like a month or more? Two months or three months or something. I think I said eight... I think I read eight weeks. Yeah. Well, like, at the end of the day, the I think... The one area that the Jays are pretty shaky in, I I don't really buy this whole the, that the bullpen is shaky. I really don't think that's the case. I think they just got way too many arms that are very interest interesting. Um, where one of these guys is going to turn into a solid reliever, or a few of them are going to turn into good relievers. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like a, Trent, a guy like Trent Thornton could probably turn into a good reliever, like a multi inning reliever, even. Yeah, you yeah. never know, right? Like some of these, Sean some Rico, of these uh, for how long? Some of these starters that they have stockpiled are going to turn into good relievers. Or, yeah. yeah, like they have a lot of depth, right? In the so league. that's why I don't really understand the whole thing where the the Jays need to address the bullpen. They really don't. They don't necessarily. No. I I would feel better about like if they got a guy like Colin McHugh though, but I mean, I don't know. right. But, like, I can understand why they're, like, not on it. Well, even even AJ Cole, who was signed to a minor league deal earlier, like, he's, Yeah, there you go, he's, another he's one. Interesting. You know, he's, he's been, he's had some... Uh, like, marginally, but yeah, yeah he's, he's interesting. He's had some mild success in uh, the major so far as a real <laughs> That is the best ringing endorsement. He's had some, you know, mild success. <laughs> yeah, and uh, Philippe Beaumont had some mild success in the independent league. Yeah. And for Tia yeah, in that there you uh, go. Olympic qualifying tournament, too, in, like, the three games you pitched. Yeah, it's just not the time to invest in the bullpen. So, like, they're doing the right thing by not investing in it. Yeah. And, you know, they could they could sign some uh, comfort food veteran relievers like Colin McHugh, but they're not going to make a difference on the season. Well, that's true. Yeah. I mean, yeah. They just might be deadline deals for, you know, the next 12th starter on the depth chart. Well, I'm I'm pretty sure they'll end up signing like their their David Phelps and Daniel Hudson's again this year. They just gotta wait to see which guys fall to them at like you know one year, two million dollar deals or whatever it is, minor league deals or etc. yeah, yeah. So the Pirates trading Marte is so like they've got to be trading Archer. 
I would think so. Uh, Are they going to wait and hope he has a good first couple months? Maybe. Well, I'm kind of. Yeah, I think like they they'd have to save face. I think. I think that Archer. I'm kind of an Archer truther this year. Uh, An Archer truther. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I I can see (sighs) when he scrapped his uh, chasing fastball in the last, the second half last year. He went off. And I don't know. I, I could just see it translating. I just think that's a convenient narrative that mm-hmm. I'm willing to buy into. Yeah, Mike, you should know better. Yeah, <laughs> and you you do this th- you do this stuff too often, Mike. You you know, a guy's like, oh, you know, he ditched X pitch or he changed X stance, and uh, from you know the August twenty first to uh, September thirteenth, uh, he was great, and then uh, he had a phantom injury, and then. Uh, you know, for a game or two, he was good after that, but then the injury came lingering. Like, come on, Mike, stop falling through these narratives. Optimism is the spice of life, Alan. Optimism or foolhardy ishness? <laughs> I think I messed up a word. It's fine. Okay, thank you. Would you? What would you trade for Archer right now? Not much. Like as the Jays, or just in general? Yeah, as Toronto. Like, no, you're Toronto. Whoever the fuck is the GM of Pittsburgh I, right now ben calls you. Oh, it is? <laughs> yeah, it is. So Ben Sheridan Ooh, calls his old friend Ross. Nepotism. Mono a mono. Yeah. Hey, hey Ben, remember when we let you take this job? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I, do you think that kind of thing... Okay, just totally off topic. Do think that kind of thing actually exists to any extent? Mm, or is it too much I think GMs are probably friendly with one another. Like, GMs probably have, like... The one thing that we learned from that, um, that, you know, more scuzzy act- actions from the Astros when they were like stealing the Cardinals stuff was that basically real GM conversations are the same as the conversations you have in your fantasy leagues. Yeah, I know. That was hilarious. So we all like play in fantasy. So we know that there's certain guys that we like dealing with and certain guys we don't like dealing with. And I'm sure it's the same in in the majors. Yeah, like, I mean, I definitely have, like, my my people I go to that are... I just know we're more receptive and, you know, would be willing to... Well, they're just easier to deal with. Like, you, yeah. you guys are able to get on the same page. Like, me and Nick are tend to be really good trading partners Actually, yeah, Nick in fantasy. But, yeah, I mean, it, you can also look at it and say, oh, where is this team on the, you know, on the win curve? And just go, oh, yeah, we match up really well. Right, like, like, like you like fit... GM, so. Yeah, and it's a GM that's able to kind of like open the conversation by, you know, first of all, one thing I hate getting is a friggin' low ball right off the bat. I know other guys don't really uh, mind it, but bothers me. I'm sure it bothers some GMs, but like a, a GM that's able to like kind of assess like what his per- per- perspective trade partner kind of is looking for. Yeah. Yeah. So the fact that they're familiar with Ben Charrington, it might help, but I don't think that they're going to get like a discount on it or whatever, right? No. no. And I mean, chances are it's, I mean, at least for, with Chris Archer specifically, it's probably all moot because unless this team completely blows. Well, like off, he really needs to not screw up the Chris Archer trade, right? Yeah. Because they screwed up the first time. Oh, the so they really need to not screw up the second time. So, so you guys wouldn't be super interested in Archer right now, even if... I mean, all they wanted was like, Gabe, like Gabe Marino or whatever isn't. You know, like funny is one prospect like that. I'm really high on Marino, but I guess you do have to eventually trade from the farm. Um, yeah, I would probably do that, but I wouldn't. Uh, like Pittsburgh would probably be looking for more than that. I don't it's know. One, it's only one year of Archer, right? I'm just not that interested in Archer. I know, too. He's got this here, and then he's got an $11 million team option. Which is pretty good. Okay. He's Uh, he's, he's got value. You know what? For just game, I I would... Even though I like Moreno, I think I would do that. Like, if if the Jays found themselves, you know, in that position. Or, you know, maybe even just even right now, like... I thought it was just one year. No, it's two. Oops. Getting him for like that's the thing. Getting him for twenty twenty one is would be pretty good for eleven million bucks. Yeah, that'd be great. That's pretty good. I'd have to strongly consider that that trade. Uh, I think you'd have to just do it. 
Well, it would probably take Gabriel Marino and then, well, and then like somebody- someone in like the 20 to 30th prospect range. Yes. Really? You think that's all it would take? Yeah. Right right now, if they were willing to do him right now. But they're they're probably waiting to see if he has a good start, and then they're going to try to get two Gabe Marinos or whatever, you know? Yeah. Hmm. Kirk would definitely be off the table, though. Well, yeah, he's just he's no El Capitan is going in. There. Kirk's interesting. If you look at like some of the Blue Jays prospect rankings coming out this offseason, you can probably get a taste for how different teams would evaluate Kirk. So some of them are going to hate him because they're right. just gonna, if they're you know if if, if there's someone they hate, who just they hate they're fat phobic. Yeah, fat phobic. Yeah, so they hate fatties, which is not progressive. It's very it's not actually actually it's like a human rights yeah, issue, it really is. I think that if anyone rejects Kirk, you'd be like, look at his numbers, and they're like, well, he's fat. I think you've got a case for the. I think you've got a case for the human rights tribunal. And oh, baseball, yeah. baseball's had a fat phobia problem for its entire existence. People used to make fun of Babe Ruth, I think, for how big he not, was. Yeah, but not even like fat. Like some guys that just are just big. Well, Vlad's fat, but. Uh, who am I thinking of? I mean, like the Molinas, none of the Molinas are particularly thin. All were pretty good catchers. That's what I always think of when people say like, oh, he's got a bad body. It's a fucking catching prospect. Exactly. Do you I can watch understand baseball? how it'd be hard on his knees. Well, which is funny though. That's why that's what makes Gabe Moreno so intriguing is because he is athletic in the way that like GT Real Muto is athletic for a catcher. Like, he's that same kind of build. Catching prospects are so annoying. Like, there's always these catching prospects, and people say, oh, he's so athletic, and he runs so well for a catcher, and then they always, like, most of them suck. Like, uh, Blake Swyart? Yeah, he's he's one. Garbage. Yeah. I hate investing in catching prospects because a lot of the times, catching prospects' entire value hinges on them staying at a catcher because they suck at hitting and they suck at running. So if they can't stick at catcher, then yeah, there's nowhere to slide. And you saw that, like I just brought up Swire, but you, you know, you see that with a guy like Blake Swire or his back. Same kind of, same kind of thing with uh, like second base prospects, which people don't tend to think about, but like they have nowhere to go, you know? I mean, they could go to left field or something. Yeah, you could go to left field. Even more options, I think. But it, it like a catcher can go to first base. It's kind of similar to a second base. Yeah, but the problem field. is that catchers, like catching prospects, can hardly ever hit. That's yeah, they suck. Yeah, <laughs> almost, almost always. Which is why I still hope that a guy like Danny Jansen could turn it around, and maybe Alejandro Kirk can be that. Well, role. I don't think there's a question about Jansen. I mean, like he's been putting in work this off season. Yes. Um. There's a good bat in in Danny Jansen somewhere. I also I don't even care if he like figures it out offensively. Even if he just regresses to like league average, like you know his, and he still projects to be a league average hitter even after having a 68 WRC plus. So that yeah. should tell you tell you a lot about the indicators. Like there, like there's nothing to worry about unless he repeats that all year. Then you can start to worry about him. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not really worried about Jansen. I think like he's gonna he's gonna figure it out, and then if he if he struggles or whatever, there's Reese McGuire too. Like catching is just not a problem for this team right now. You're rooting for Jansen to to figure it out, but honestly, this the whole organization is so deep at catcher. It's just not something that I I'm gonna worry it's, about. Their depth is crazy. I mean, you know, yeah, like you've got is... Kirk coming up. Like Kirk's pretty close. Kirk's, um, so you, you could essentially say he's like one more year in the min- minors, and then he could potentially be coming up like mid twenty twenty one. That that is possible. If you're looking, yeah, if you're looking at his current, I mean, he's hit ever like he in his career, he's never had a season where he's struck out more than he's walked. Which that is, is insane. Because he's he's about while to playing a good defense uh, defensive catcher, might we add? A lot of people say he's not good, and this is just more like people being like, "Oh, he's fat, so he has to be a bad." Like, there's no other option but right. for him to be a bad defensive catcher. And he's going to be probably in Double A next year. So, 
And another thing, I, I feel like if a, a catcher is good offensively, I think people just automatically assume that they're bad defensively. Like, do you find that's the case, Nick? I, I'm not sure if that's just my own projection. Um, I find that's an assumption that people just jump to automatically. I think there could be some bias there. Like, you know. Like, they can't possibly good, be good at both things. Yeah, focusing too much on the hitting, not focusing on their defense. Maybe that creeps into it, even if it's not necessarily true. Yeah. Like, looking at Kirk's strikeout and walk rates down there in a ball and then pulling up Danny Jansen's strikeout and walk rates in the upper minors in 2017 and 2018, like Jansen's stats in the minor leagues were insane. Like how is he not like a top 10 prospect in baseball? (laughs) Yeah. That's a weird one. People, people, it's the same thing you're talking about. Like they said he was a, not a good defensive catcher. Yeah, I think people always kind of said that he was like maybe average at best. Defense like he had the tools to be average, but then there was some weird thing about his like minor league framing numbers were bad or something. Yeah. Yeah. That was like like a political hit job on Danny Jansen cuz it was just completely false. Well, I mean, he's one of the be- literally one of the best framers in baseball now. So, yeah, completely false. Yeah, it was just like it was like something Don Lemon would say. Like a Kurt Schilling-esque political hit job? Yeah, sure. <laughs> You're trying to trigger me with the Kurt, with the Don Lemon stuff? <laughs> How dare you? So Okay, so speaking of Kirk, Baseball America just released their top 100 prospects. Kirk was listed to have been one of five players that just missed. So, I mean, he's in the top that five. That is... You know what? What did I say at the beginning of the year, eh? I just want to toot my own horn here. I predicted that he would make a top 100, and I'm pretty much right. Yeah, I mean, you know, for all for all intents and purposes, he is a top 100 prospect. According exactly. To all intensive purposes, I'm right. So, like, what's the difference? Five spots, you know it's, what I mean? It's, it's well, it's, it's, a, it's binary. It's yes or no. Uh, it's <laughs> It's more nuanced than that, okay? It really is. No, you didn't say Alejandro like, Kirk will essentially be a top 100 prospect or something like that. Well, I mean, the names are interchangeable, right? Like, you know, what's the difference between prospect 105 and prospect 100? Nothing. Exactly. So I'm Except right. for the technicality of whether or not they are a top 100 uh, prospect. Wrong. But, uh, you know, getting to the Jays that made the top 100. Nate Pearson was number seven. I mean, so we're talking top 10 prospects in baseball. That's that's great. I mean, basically every scouting report now and every evaluator is saying there is almost zero reliever risk at this point um, that they see him as a starter. So, I mean, that that's pretty exciting. I mean, to think that this guy could even be a number three or better would be... I think a nice outcome at this point for this rotation. Like, couple that with, with a guy like uh, Hyunjin Ryu, uh, possibly as early as 2020, at least for a part of it, and, um, you know, then get some uh, some other um, some other guys coming up as well, like Simeon Woods Richardson, who hit IA this year, and he's number 61 on the list. Jordan Groshans was number 29. Not that seems year. low. Low in what way? Num- number what? 61. Oh, Big Sim? Yeah. Statistically, he's like, like, you would put him in top 10 pitching prospects. Yeah. If you just look at things like age versus level, strike at weight, walk rate, um, and his stuff's good, and his body's good. Well, if you, if um, I compare him to like David uh, Garcia in a way, uh, at least in terms of like performance and, and relative to age. So if you look at it, I mean, Garcia was completely ignored on prospect lists until really like a year ago when he was already in the upper minors. So in that and sense, Davey Garcia is like five, five, nine, isn't well, he? I, he is. I was going to say, that's the only difference between the two is that like makes him has the, the height, the, the size. Yeah. So he's already ahead of the Garcia in that sense though, which means that he's probably, you know, next year this time we're looking at like a top 20 prospect, if not even higher. This is, it's weird. It's weird that he wasn't, 
like this is a guy the Mets took second round fifth overall like normally when a New York team does that and then a player has statistical success like they just skyrocket yeah maybe the trade to Toronto like the trade to Toronto increased his profile it seemed like it did I think that only works for the Yankees yeah yeah it kind of seemed like it did though in a lot of ways there was so there was so much fanfare around that trade more so uh on the negative side for the Jays I remember there were even apparently front offices around the league chiming in saying, oh, we didn't get a chance to 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 beat that. It seems weak. They just jumped at the first offer they got, you know, et cetera, et cetera, blah, blah, blah. But this trade aged very well. Guys just talking shit. Oh, totally. That trade aged so well. Yeah. This guy's going to be in double A this year as a 19-year-old. That's nuts. That's, that's... And that's to throw in Anthony Kay, who... I mean, could legitimately be as good as Marcus Stroman. That's, I mean, you know, he's, that is a possibility. I, I'm not saying it will happen. Just, I hated watching Marcus Stroman pitch. I know I've, I've talked about that, but even if he's not as good, but I don't have to watch, you know, sinker low and away for the entire game. I think that's a win for the Cubs. It, he was fun to watch when he first came up and then he kind of transformed into the sinker shimmy dude and it was just you know it, it was it was fun when he was good but when he was giving up 14 singles a game it wasn't fun yeah, for sure but yeah i mean anthony k kind of has that ceiling of a number three probably more likely a back end starter though or uh yeah a long man maybe even but yeah i mean that was a great trade for the jays and uh there's a and then they used that money to sign union rio basically that they would have put on a stroman extension so it was basically Strowman for Ryu. Mm, and, that's true. And Big Sim and K. That's All right, point. so I'm going to officially retract my position on that trade yeah. so that it's on the record. I no longer think that it was a bad trade, and I'm no longer upset about it. Okay. Just Perfect. so you guys know. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> and then, uh, so Groshans keeps getting 60 grades on his hit and power. Yes. Which are good grades. So Toronto has two shortstop prospects that have like, you know, ceiling, 60, 60 ceilings on offense with Aurelvis and him. Yeah. And I mean, that's pretty fun. That's great. Although I do want to say just for the the record, there's a good chance Grossens and or even Aurelvis for that matter end up moving off of a short, but for now anyway, yeah, they're they're both shortstop. Well, I think one of them is going to end up at third um, or Bichette ends up at third. One of them is going to end up at third. There's no way that Vlad's going to stay at third. Not long term. Well, I don't. I, I would be surprised if he's at third after the season. I, I agree with you. I think they're going to give him another season to be at third. But I, like, I think after this year, they're going to be like, okay, well, we signed Ryu not to just sit on our asses and do nothing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Then they'll have a reason to if. If Groshans is like approaching the majors, then it'll be a simple thing. It doesn't have to be, you know, Vlad, right. you failed. It'll be like, uh, we got this stud coming up. Sorry, bud. Yeah. Right. Or they can make some sort of weird thing about keeping him healthy or whatever. Something like that. I don't I mean, even, I honestly don't think Vlad even cares. I think he does. He seems like he really wants to stay at third base. I don't know. I think they kind of just organizationally, they have him on the third base track because they kind of think it'll keep him healthier. Like it'll be a reason for him not to balloon. Uh, but who cares if he balloons, to be honest? Fatties can hit. Yeah. I mean, Miguel Cabrera wasn't like it, it. Seems like he has a similar kind of path to as Miguel Cabrera. Different body, like, different like, body, maybe. but like similar circumstances where he's really not a third baseman. But they, well, he was starting at short. Miggy was like, you know, ripped when he came up, like a like a oh, special. He let, then he let himself go. He was originally a shortstop too, right, Miggy? Yeah. yeah. Vlad at 15 years old looked didn't look like a baseball player. <laughs> yeah, like, a football, like, a, like a linebacker. Yeah, so he he's more likely to look like Prince Fielder in five years than Miguel Cabrera. 
Yeah, Prince Fielder was still a really good player. I'll take it. Just too yeah, and, yeah, until yeah. Uh, his weight literally fused his spine together. Is that what it was? <laughs> was it his weight? No. Yeah, he like he <laughs> basically. <laughs> you have no proof of this. Look, he weighed. He played. You're just being fat phobic. He played baseball at like 350 pounds for a decade, and then his vertebrae were so compressed and fucked up he had degenerative disc disease and they had to fuse his spine together oh, <laughs> so he had to retire yeah at like age of 29 or something or 30 like he was he was pretty young i think yeah speaking of uh, going back to groshans again for a quick second do you guys remember how mad the jays fan base was when they drafted groshans at number 12 overall two years ago yeah who did they take him over uh, oh <laughs> nolan gorman was the guy that everybody seemed to want I mean, Gorman seems like a decent prospect of himself, but he strikes out a fuck ton, and I easily take Groshans over Gorman at this point. Like, One of my favorite parts about draft day is all these um, guys that know absolutely nothing about prospects getting angry. Yeah. That's, I absolutely love it. There, there was Brady one. Singer. Did people want Brady Singer again? One. Uh, Logan Gilbert was one. He, he obviously would be a pretty good pick as well at this point, but he's a pitcher. Um, who else? I think Shane McClanahan or Matthew Libertor were up there as well. Libertor had that weird thing. I, didn't he go in like the second round or like the yeah, second day? I think he was no. a comp pick. No? Was no, he? Libertor went uh, 16th, like four picks after Groshans. Oh, really? So was he, was, he was supposed to be like a number one pick, wasn't he at some point? <sighs> Libertor? Yeah. He was in the top five, like consensus-wise kind of, at least – a couple months before the draft and then he just seemed to and then something happened i don't know what happened yeah i remember Kyler i don't know if it was an injury or something on it a bit and then um yeah i don't know there's some kind of a i don't know makeup issue or something mm. anyway I, I guess the whole point is that you know groshans was a fantastic pick and sometimes it's just better to let these guys you know the actual professional evaluators do their jobs sometimes eh yeah, sometimes I give them the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. It'd be interesting to see if after the Rays dumped Libertor, how, however you say his name, what he ends up being. Like if they know something's wrong with him or people say he has like a bad spin rate. It's like a low spin fastball. Mm-hmm. Can't that be a good thing though? Low spin uh, oh. like didn't, sinker, uh, sinker ball. Wait. Oh, no. Estrada had a really high spin rate fastball, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Upward. I wasn't sure if it was like I know that his fastball like rose because it didn't spin like people or it didn't sink like people expected it to, so it yeah. seemed to rise. Well, it played- the funniest part about that was when they told Bryce Harper that fastballs don't don't rise, like it's like physically impossible, yeah. and he didn't believe them. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, love, I love I love Bryce. Uh, yeah. But uh, I think that's probably... He was like, you try, you face King, Kim, Kim, uh, Craig Kimbrell and then tell me that his fastball doesn't rise. <laughs> was, who? was Craig Kimbrell was No, it was just in general. Like, uh, they were just doing this thing on, like, the phenomenon of, like, rising fastballs and how they seem like they're rising when they're not. Right. Yeah, I know oh, uh, Louis Urias broke his handmate bone. Yeah, he's out for, like, six to eight weeks now. And that usually zaps power for like a whole year, it seems. So, no, well, it didn't zap power for uh, Matty Olson. True. Well, Matt Olson is a stud. Yeah. That gives uh, Eric Sogard a clean path to starting job. <laughs> so, good news for baseball. Yeah, that's right. The face, the face of the real face of baseball. Yeah, that's right, the you remember that, right? No, he wasn't the runner up. We you you, he you guys would. know what happened. He he was going he beat guys like uh, who did he beat? He beat way bigger guys than David. Well, David he Wright. he won so he beat everybody. Did he win? No, he didn't win. win. David Wright no. won. But no, like he, he won but MLB rigged it at the right, end. Right, exactly. Like, That's what I'm saying. Yeah. He was like the DNC rigging it against Bernie. He was like the Bernie Sanders. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, the you're just of pol- you just really desperately want to talk about politics today. Yeah. You know, it's 2020. Yeah, go Trump. Team Trump. Make America great again. So yeah, was there, uh, was there anything else you guys wanted to talk about before we kind of wrap this baby up? 
Yeah, let's talk about why uh, Bernie sucks. No, no, let's not. <laughs> Bad idea. All right, well, I think that's pretty much it for this episode, guys. Uh, you know, this was another Rearscase episode, and... Uh, yeah, we... And, uh, yeah, the, the, yeah. <laughs> well, let's uh, see you guys. Uh, yeah, Thanks for listening. Uh, Catch us out. Thanks for listening. We have a new videos. website and stuff. Goodbye. Check uh, off visit if you feel like it. Uh, <laughs> 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 oh. Yeah, so our website is back up yeah. lately, uh, like in the last week or so. And uh, that's good news. We're going to start posting a bunch of articles again. Follow us on Twitter. Oh, whoa. Well. I'm gonna make a I'm gonna make an article about the best tits in baseball. Stop it. Tits. Stop it. Uniforms. <laughs> See you guys.